Hey guys, welcome to VR Essentials. It's five o'clock here in the morning in Singapore. We have some live breaking VR news. Was about to hit the sack a little bit and catch a little bit of rest, but I decided to make this video exclusively for you as version 56 is going to be rolling out on the Meta Quest 2. What does it mean? What are all the different features coming to the Quest 2? Let's find out in the article. So we're here actually on the actual website of uh, Quest, of Meta's website, excuse me, uh, Meta Quest version 56 update, hand tracking improvements, system level captions, Facebook live streaming and more guys. All right, so um, some is well on the way and whether you're hitting the links, uh, just listening for a beach or otherwise basking in the glow of vacation, MetaQuest is here to help you make the most of it. Our version 56 update is jam packed with new features to improve your experience. Okay, so let's go first to the feature number one. They used to have a, um, a list. The way they would do it is they would have a list. So it was much easier to actually give you all the various updates that we're doing, but now we have to read through. So let's just read through very, very quickly. All right, so all hands on deck with version 56, we're rolling out hand tracking version 2.2, which focuses on hand responsiveness, bringing the experience closer to controllers. This includes up to 40% latency reduction in typical usage and up to 75% during fast movement. We've also made additional improvements to make fast-paced games even more responsive. And then they have some links to trial some demos, uh, including live sport and VR workout. So guys, what I will do is I will put some links in the description below the like button of this video. Do go and check it out. If you want to try out those demos, just go there. All right, let's continue with the actual article. Uh, we expect even more improvements to come out as we launch Quest 3 later this year, providing an immersive interaction experience, so stay tuned. So yes, of course, guys, the Quest 3 is going to be a much more powerful beast with better tracking, less latency, better technology, of course. So yes, the hand tracking should be much better. And guys, do remember that they're cancelling the Quest Pro. Do go and check out that other video. I'll put a link in the description below the like button as well in this video below there. So go and check it out after this video. All right, guys, let's continue here. So let's see, they have a, uh, they have a, a video here. So here's actually how the hand tracking works. Just to show you guys, let me just make it bigger. There we go. So featuring the hand tracking, you can see that they're pressing on something, then the UI comes up. And then basically you have a demo workout here with the actual app, which is kind of a boxing like Fitex uh xr or it used to be called that maybe it's changed name now so this looks pretty cool so do leave some comments below guys after you go and check out the actual demo the graphics look pretty good i have to say that uh the water there looks pretty hyper realistic what do you guys think let me know in the comments below about this live stream to facebook now guys is this something that you're excited about there used to be so many problems i remember the last time i did a live stream on Facebook with the Quest was with the Quest 1. And there were so many issues. They had to cancel it or they changed it or they modified it. And then they got rid of it. They brought it back. They got rid of it again. Oh, it was just really, really troublesome. Did you guys, did you manage to try it in the past? What did you think of it? Was it useful for you? Leave a comment below. Is this a feature that you feel is something you want to try as well? Now that it's back inside of the Quest 2, let us know. Let's spark the conversation, guys. So here you go live streams to facebook quest offers you daring exploits otherworldly adventures and immersive experiences you can't have anywhere else and now we're rolling out an experiment to help people share those experiences with friends in real time via live stream to facebook so guys that's right you can live stream to facebook let me just can this here so here's another video it seems to be beat saber and you can see here that there's some Chats going on as well. Okay, so this is interesting. Look at this. So can you actually chat to people via live stream on Facebook? Does this, is this what it means? Or can you just basically see people's chats, but you can't actually reply to them? This is something that I think is going to be very, very interesting. As I have to say that um, as a content creator, when I'm doing live streams, it's always nice to be able to chat people, check on the wrist, but unfortunately with the headsets that I'm using, which are these ones, the DPVR E4, the uh, HP Reverb G2, but also with the uh, Pico, 
it's not possible for me to actually use an app or something to be able to chat with people. So this could be a very useful function, I believe, for content creators. What do you think? Leave a comment below if you're excited about this specific update, guys. Or what are other updates, other updates that you actually wanted to see on the version 56 that are not part of the updates that we're talking about today? So bring others into your VR experiences by going live on Facebook whilst you play your favorite game. Uh, to get started, just add your Facebook account to the same account center as your meta account and you'll be good to go. Back to back by popular demand, the live stream to Facebook feature was redesigned to be as seamless as and as easy to use as possible with high quality video output and persistent access to live chat panel. So you can do live chat. That is pretty awesome, I have to admit. As a reminder, this will roll out gradually, so not everyone will have access to this. So guys, I think this is, I mean, it's pretty cool if you use Facebook, of course. Personally, I, well, I use it because there's a Pico group that I do go to sometimes, and I do promote the videos also on Facebook when I post on YouTube, of course. So we get more people to join the uh, VO Essentials community. But, you know, it's great. It would be great if we could actually do this on YouTube, for me, personally speaking, or, you know, other social media platforms and not just Facebook, of course, but Meta or Meta, they're not going to promote other social media, correct? So new ways to stay connected. We're making it easier to connect with friends across chats and parties. Now, when you start a call, a chat thread is automatically created with all the members invited to the call. You can also start a call from a one-on-one -on -one or group chat thread and all members of that thread are invited to your call. So here's an actual picture of the thread here. So guys, is this uh, you know something that you were really looking forward to, uh, and you really wanted? You know, do you think it's something that's going to be useful to you? These changes let you easily invite your friends to travel with you, uh, to an app or world. We've made invites easily accessible, or on profile cards and in chat threads, so you can get into the games faster. Of course, I mean. Let's be honest, guys, it's all about gaming, gaming, gaming together, multiplayer, of course. So this is something that I guess would make it easier for people to be able to game together with your friends without having to find people in each and every single game. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Love to get your thoughts. Let's spark the conversation on this as well. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Accessibility updates, live captions plus a button remapping on demand. Okay, this is very interesting. Subtitles are valuable whether you're hard of hearing, a member of the deaf community, or just happen to enjoy having them on. They improve the user experience for people who are taking a break from loud volume, are looking to better understand conversations and find them helpful to remain focused. And now we're giving people uh, system level captions to improve the Quest experience. For now, live captions are available in MetaQuest TV. Okay, uh, and MetaQuest store in headset. Our goal is to improve usability and create a positive experience for everyone. Cool, awesome. Well, I mean, I guess this is pretty useful for people, as they mentioned, who, you know, require this kind of, um, you know, this kind of functionality. And also, when we're creating content, it's nice to actually have the caption too, because people can actually read if they don't have the volume on on the phone whilst they're watching a video, for example, or a live stream or, you know, whatever. So it's quite useful in a whole heap of different ways, I imagine. Do leave a comment below. Let me know if you're excited by this specific feature in the update of version 56 for the Quest 2. And here's another video. Let me just can the sound and let me bring it up. So this is, this seems to be something about controllers, apply changes, Okay, maybe some binding. Let me just read above. Whether you're an avid gamer or productivity power user, customization can be key to a positive experience. So being able to personalize your controller button configuration is a plus, both for people with this dexterity challenges and without. That's why we're also giving people the ability to swap buttons, create custom layouts, and otherwise tailor the controller's uh, settings to best meet their unique needs. Oh, okay, guys. So basically, you can also... Uh, customize your buttons on your controller and this video shows you that all you have to do is press a button then choose the other button that you want to customize it with and boom you apply the changes and you're absolutely done so guys this looks pretty pretty cool and then here's another update here automatically power headset to update hmm. what is this guy what, what does this mean guys automatically power headset 
to update. This is pretty interesting. All right, let's read more about this. Um, okay, so there are a few things as frustrating as putting on your headset, ready to jump into your next VR adventure, only to find out um, the software is out of date. Okay, yes. Um, that's why we're excited to introduce automatic power to update functionality. Now, when your headset's charging, you will automatically power on and perform seamless app and OS updates and cloud backups so you can get back into the action with as little friction as possible. If you happen to put the headset on while it is charging and an update or backup is in progress, you should see a notification letting you know the status so you aren't kept in the dark. So wait a minute, let me just reread this very quickly. Um, so now when your headset is charging, it will automatically power. Now guys, I do have a little bit of an issue with this. Does this mean that the headset can automatically power on at any time or just during a backup? Because normally speaking, if your headset is powered off, then technically speaking, it means that Meta will not have access to your surroundings. That means it won't be able to hear your conversations with other people. It wouldn't be able to record or know where it is in a specific room. So this could potentially have some privacy issues. I'm just a little bit concerned about the fact that it can automatically power on even though you have powered off your headset, it might mean that it could also power on at other times when it's not doing an automatic up update. So I'm just a little bit concerned about this. What do you guys think about this specific feature in the update? Do leave a comment below. Let's have that conversation about this specific feature. All right, let's go to the next. Uh, and I think it's one of the final updates. Introducing system-wide local dimming on Quest Pro. We've heard overwhelmingly positive praise from the community, from the improved display quality seen with local dimming, as well as the desire to enable local dimming more widely. In this release, we're adding a new toggle in experimental settings to turn on setting while local dimming on Quest Pro. Okay, so this seems to be more for Quest Pro. While the setting is off by default, you can turn it on to enable local dimming across all apps unless a developer opts out. People who turn on local dimming should see uh, improved color contrast, especially in dark scenes. So this shows you a little picture here as to what potentially it is, where it is to enable it or disable it, I would imagine, so it will be in your settings. All right, and here are the release notes, by the way. So I'll also put a link to the actual release notes to all the various different uh, all the various different updates that they did as well in the comments below the like button of this video. So guys, what are you most excited about in terms of all these various different updates rolling out with the version 56? And in the previous version, by the way, the GPU and the CPU was actually upped. You should have had more power inside of your Quest 2 and your Quest Pro. Do leave some comments below. Let me know whether you really felt those changes since the previous update, as there's no new CPU or GPU boosting in the new version 56. Love to know your feelings and your thoughts and your, your feedback about the previous update, about that, that oomph, that boost inside of the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro as well. Guys, until next time, hit the likes and the notification bell. Today, later today, we're doing a live AMA with Valim from an amazing developer on the VR Essentials YouTube channel live. So hit the notification bell to be notified of when we start and also, of course, our future updates and future videos that I'll be posting to the channel as well. And hit the likes. Let me know if you like these kind of VR breaking news videos so I can do more for you in the future. Until next time, take it easy, guys. Bye for now. Bye for now.